Hey everyone, how you doing? It's Vicious here. Today I'm going to be bringing you a tutorial video on how to tweak Dead Island for PC. I'm going to show you how to increase the field of view and increase the graphics settings to a higher level than what you can actually do in the game menu system. But first thing, we're going to start right here in game so I can give you a really quick before and after video so you can see the effect that the tweaks have on the game itself. So this is where my character loads and I'm just going to show you the before video. I haven't made any changes right now. I want you to take a look at my character shadows. Just take a look at how detailed they are, how they look in general. Take a look around the environment. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to focus right here on, put my crosshair over the E for lifeguard. And I want you to look at the left and right field of view as far as possible. To the left we see one whole boulder and half of another boulder. To the right we see like one whole palm tree and just the leaves of another. So this is the game's default FOV and the game's highest graphic settings. I have everything maxed out in the options. And I'm going to end that here as the before video and come right back with the after video. Okay everyone here we are We're back in game and now I have applied the field of view tweaks and the graphics tweaks that I will be showing you how to do today so you can see the effects it has. Take a look at what we see in front of us but first we'll take a look down at our shadow. Look at the difference in as far as how defined, crisp, and clear the shadows are. When you look around the environment, you'll see that all these objects have their own shadows. So it actually brings the entire game environment to life. It makes it look much more realistic, much better. And then we're going to go to what we did before. We're going to focus on the E and the lifeguard sign here. And look at our maximum field of view. Before we could only see one boulder and a half, but now we can actually see another second boulder and a coke sign up there that we couldn't see before. Wow, a product placement. To the right we'll see the palm tree that we saw before and almost a second palm tree that we didn't see before. So field of view is nice and increased. I changed it from 62.5 to 82.5 so you can actually change this field of view to suit what you like. You don't have to have it as wide as this where you can make it even wider than I have it. But now you know what you're going to be doing. I'm going to get into the tutorial portion of this guide. Okay, hey everyone, welcome to the tutorial portion of the guide. First thing I'm going to show you is a really great resource to have on hand. I didn't actually create any of these tweaks. I've just been scouring the internet for them and then trying them out myself. The tutorial video is just me making this easier for you, for those who don't understand all this nerd speak that sometimes you can find on the internet. But if you go to this thread right here on the Steam forums, you can see the URL up there on the, my Zoom portion of the screen. That is probably the number one spot so far that I have found on the internet that um, has a collection of tweaks that you can do to the game. So if you want to remember that, you can come here to find some more tweaks that I'm not going to be showing you today. And also they update, you know, with new things all the time. So check that out. The other thing you might want to do now, if you don't already have it, you're going to need at some point in this tutorial either 7-Zip or WinRAR. And I prefer WinRAR personally, so you can download WinRAR from here. And once you've got that installed, or if you already have it installed, then you'll be good to go to continue with the tutorial. So let me start at square one. First thing you should do is install the game. Yeah, that makes sense, right? But, you know, say start at the basics. Install the game. Go into the game. Go into the video card graphics settings area and make some changes. Change your resolution, change your shadow map, change your detail settings. Apply all those changes and exit the game. The reason you want to do this is because when you make some in-game changes and you exit the game, uh, the game is going to create this folder for you in your Windows My Documents folder. It will create a folder called Dead Island and then inside of that folder will be another one called Out. And then it will create a folder called settings and it will give you this two files. One's called audio, one's called video, and they have an extension of SCR. This is the way Dead Island saves your configuration settings for the game. And the reason we need to know that and have that here is so you can edit it and actually make changes beyond the highest value that the game gives you. So. Real quick, I'm going to fade over into the configurations option screen in the game and show you the options you have available. It should be up on screen right now and you'll see there's not a whole lot there. A few detail settings, 
windowed motor full screen, resolution, shadow map size, and that's about it. And now I'll flash it back to the tutorial screen. Now let me show you how to open these up. The easiest thing to do is just open up your notepad and drag and drop. This video file uh, configuration, stock video, I named it stock so I can have a comparison for you. This here on the right hand side is what the file will look like if you maxed out every single setting inside of the game options. This other file, the one I actually use for my game, is what we'll be tweaking. And now you have both of them side by side. Make note that there is like a cheat sheet here. The stuff that is double slashed means it's just commented. It doesn't actually affect the uh, settings. It tells you what everything does. It tells you about FSAA being the anti-sailing. tells you about texture quality options. You have very low, low or high. Filtering options. It tells you V-Sync enables vertical sync. It tells you that material quality, water quality, grass quality, that the lower number is better. For FX quality, the higher number is better. For fade FX level, zero through four, lower being better. Tells you here about the shader models. We'll get into that in a little bit in a second. And then right below all that is where you actually have all of your settings. So this will be matching whatever you just set in a game when I told you to go into your game and set some settings. Now we'll move over to my file and I'll show you some of the tweaks we'll be making. Resolution you should have set in game. Monitor you're not gonna worry about. BPP you're not gonna worry about. FSAA, this is full screen anti-sailing. This is what takes away the jaggies in the game. Set it to an even number, zero, two, four, six, or eight. Eight being the highest. I do believe it can go up to 16, but eight is already so high that you won't see much of a difference. So with it set to eight, the game will have pretty much no jaggies and it will look much better. So just plug in the number you want to try. Remember, the higher you go, the more performance it demands out of your computer. So if you're already getting a low frame rate, try it maybe a two or just leave it at zero. V-Sync, vertical sync. This is obviously not even on the original thing and it was not an end game option at all. So what you have to do if you want to turn on V-Sync is just actually add it to your file like I just did here. Type in V-Sync and put the two uh, little symbols there. Vertical sync, let me explain it to you a little bit in case you don't know what it does. Your monitor refresh rate, most monitors are 60 hertz. It makes the game's frame rate not exceed your monitor's refresh rate. So if you were getting 400 frames per second on the game and you didn't have V-Sync on, what might, what might happen is it'll cause tearing in the video, especially when you do fast panning motions. And that is the reason that V-Sync was created primarily was to prevent tearing in the game. But a secondary benefit of VSync is because you're limiting the frame rate of the game. Say I'm limiting it to 60 instead of 400. Your video card works much less hard. It, so it means it will produce less heat and use less energy. So for those of you who are having overheating problems, I've already seen a few reports of people having overheating, overheating issues on their video card. That is probably the reason why. You probably have a high-end computer and it's capable of processing the game way too quickly and it's overheating because you don't have it cooled well enough. So if you turn on VSync, it probably will not overheat anymore and your computer will thank you for it later. So I recommend you use this option unless you have some specific reason not to. Uh, we're not going to mess with that. Texture quality high is already the same as the highest value the game gave us to set, so there's nothing to tweak. For filtering though, the highest level the game gave us was trilinear. You'll notice from our cheat sheet, we actually have one higher than that. We can go to antistropic or antistropic trilinear. So both of these are higher. Um, antistropic trilinear does not work for some people's video cards. So experiment with it. If the game doesn't load right or crashes on you or something, change it to just antistropic. And I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but don't be a grammar police, just deal with it. Full screen or windowed, you can set that in game. Shadows high, you can set that in game. Shadow map size, here's the first major tweak besides V-Sync and anti-sailing. The maximum value that we seem to be able to figure out to use so far is 4096 versus the in-game maximum default of 1024. So that means it is four times the quality. You saw in the introduction video 
that the shadows became much more crisp and more defined because of this higher setting. Some video cards will not support 4096 without crashing, probably due to the amount of memory or just the drivers, I'm not sure. But for those of you who are crashing, change this to half of that value. 2048 seems to work for everybody without causing a crash. The spot shadow map size seems to still work at 4096, even for those who are crashing. Light maps we don't need to mess with. Gamma, you can set that in game. Refresh rate, you don't need to mess with. You can set that in game. Material quality. Going back to the cheat sheet, it says that lower is better. If we look at our default settings, it was set to two. Zero is lower than two. So in theory, this should be making the quality of the materials better. FX quality matches three and three. The fade level FX, the fade, F, fade FX level tells you right here, zero to four, lower being better. So we set it to zero. The highest before was a three, or I'm sorry, a two, losing my spot here. Water quality set to zero, grass quality set to zero. The game gave us two and zero because it gave us zero on grass quality. That's why we can assume that water quality can go to zero and the material quality can go to zero. And then the last tweak here is the shader path. The game gave us three. Looking at the cheat sheet, it says three is equal to 3.0. If you're familiar with video game uh, graphics card terms, shader model 3.0, shader model 4.0, those are what we're looking at here. The game gives you shader model 3.0 by default, but any newer video card within the last three or four years should easily support shader model 4.0 which is going to give you probably better graphics and better performance. So you can safely change this to five instead of three, as long as you know your video card supports it. So that is the, all the tweaks we did to this file. As you can see, we changed quite a bit. There was quite a bit here that the end game options did not allow us to change. And now what you want to do is save your file, file, save. And once you've closed it, You want to make sure you right click on your file, go to properties and change it to read only. This way, when you open dead Island next time, the game does not overwrite any of your values that you just set with default values again. So that was the very first tweak. That was the portion of the introduction where you saw the shadows changed and everything looking much nicer. Now we're going to get into a more advanced tweak. We're going to get to change the FOV, the field of view. For this part, what you need to do, you need to go into your Steam directory and find your Dead Island game files. Me on Windows 7 64-bit, this is where it's located. C drive, program files, x86, Steam, Steam apps, common, Dead Island. From within that Dead Island folder, there's a folder called DI. And I'll be looking at these pack files here. These pack files are nothing more than just a zip file or a RAR file. It's just a container that holds a bunch of the game's configuration files inside of it. So go ahead and open up your WinZip or your WinRAR or whatever and drop data zero pack in here. And you'll see it's just a folder called data. And then it has a whole bunch of the game's files inside of it. For the FOV tweak, we just want to go into skills. And we want to get this file called default levels XML. Now it's important to realize that the directory of this was data, skills, and then there's the file. So we're going to go back to our dead island folder that's in our my documents that the game created for us. You're going to have to create a folder called data, create a folder called skills. And then you're going to drag and drop the default levels XML into it. So you create a copy of this file so that you can edit it. And you can edit this within Notepad. It's just an XML file. Scroll down just a short way. It is not very far down. And look for camera default FOV. It's going to say V equals. And for me, it defaulted to 62.5. That is the game's default FOV. I changed it to 82.5, which is a good compromise. You should try something between 70 and 90, finding what works for you. Save your file. 
And you might want to do that trick we did before where you make this read only, although I haven't actually found it to be necessary yet for this file. And now next time you start the game up, what's going to happen is the game will read your files that you put inside of your my documents before it goes into the pack file and reads the default values from the game. So basically any of these that you copy over to your my documents and make changes to will be read before the game reads its default files. And that's what we're doing. So we're not editing, hacking, changing any of the game files, which means this should be safe for VAC. It, sh it shouldn't be bannable, detectable, no memory hacks here, no exe hacks, no hex editing. We're just creating copies of these files. So this is a safe method of modding the game files. And with this technique now known by you, you can go back to that thread I told you about earlier on the Steam forums, and you can do these other tweaks like disabling the blur and other things like that because they're done the same way. You're going to grab a different file out of the, the pack file, and you're going to create a new folder tree inside of your My Documents. Like for the motion blur, for instance, it goes under data, scripts, and you need this file blur camera motion and you go in here and you edit that file. So I just wanted to give you the groundwork. I'm not going to show you how to do every single tweak. Now that you know how to do it for one file, you can go back and make any other tweaks you want to do on your own. So I hope you guys found that tutorial useful and keep an eye out for my upcoming gameplay videos for Dead Island. I'll see you guys next time.